there is a problem here, and it is growing greater. The alienation of the armed forces, the professionalized all-volunteer armed forces from the body politic, from the people at large, is growing larger, and it's growing more dangerous. My name is Lawrence Wilkerson. I'm a professor of government and public policy at the College of William & Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. I served in the United States Army for 31 years, and I was also Colin Powell's special assistant when he was chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from roughly 1989 to 1993. Well, I, I think that the United States military has been one of the strong points of this country for so long because its officer corps, as Colin Powell and I used to discuss quite frequently, is such that it would never even contemplate a coup. It would never contemplate marching down Pennsylvania Avenue and taking over the Congress or the White House. Um, but we are seeing a period now because of this interminable war because of its being an all-volunteer and thus a professionalized force and dependent on money for its existence, let's face it, that's what it's all about. It's really an all-recruited force. It's not an all-volunteer force. The fifth quintile of America, that is to say the least wealthy, the least educated, is the predominant number in the military, especially in the enlisted ranks. So there is a problem here, and it is growing greater. The alienation of the armed forces, the professionalized all-volunteer armed forces from the body politic, from the people at large, is growing larger, and it's growing more dangerous. What's happening right now with a sitting president who has a reluctance to use the military instrument in any overt sort of way, he's looking at a commander-in-chief in the Pacific and one of his lackeys out there who are challenging the civil military relationship in this country right now, suggesting in open print and in public remarks that the Chinese need to be challenged in the South China Sea far more forcefully than we have thus far. This will give you some indication of how a professionalized military, a military that is answerable only to its own needs, which of course are more and more and more and more money, and more and more and more weapons and so forth, uh, leads policy, leads the foreign policy of this country sometimes. The national security budget is almost a trillion, it's over a trillion dollars. When you throw in Department of Energy's nuclear weapons, throw in the intelligence budget, budget, the Veterans Administration budget and so forth, you get over a trillion dollars. That's power, that's real power. And there is a certain fear in inexperience. None of these people have ever worked with the military, seriously. No John Kasich, I mean, he's probably the closest. Ted Cruz, certainly not. Donald Trump, certainly not. Bernie Sanders has had some experience because he's been in the Senate, but not directly with the military. So all of them are going to be a little bit frightened. That's something you have to take into consideration because every single four-star general and admiral knows that. What does a president do when all these people descend on him, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the head of the NSA, and so forth, and say, Mr. President, you've got to do this. You've got to go kill people. You've got to do it in the name of the United States of America, freedom, democracy, and everything else. You've got to go do this. Well, he's got himself and maybe one or two of his advisors who are going to stand up to these people.